Well, here you go. Here's a look at the towing rigs. This is the first one I start out with. Bought it new in 2002. F-150. 4.6 motor. Uh, fortunately, that's a little light duty. It's done really well, considering. Um, that thing's probably towed at least a couple hundred thousands of pounds, if not millions of pounds. But the biggest problem is, and I'll show you when I get to the trailer, is the trailer weighs more than the truck does. My trailer is an old Bobcat equipment hauler from a rental company. It was built in 1978. You'll notice the fold up ramps on it. They are removable. The best thing about it is the quarter inch diamond plate fenders that are nearly indestructible. And yes, when I've had cars that are hard to steer, I've actually driven over those fenders and practically rolled the car, but still got it on the trailer. Now, you're most people wonder why would you have such a heavy trailer? Well, it was cheap, but also I've modified this. The straight frames on it. I'll show you some of the modifications. Up front it has these cross braces going about a foot and a half apart. In the back it's less than a foot. But I added, when I decked this thing, because it was wood, I added these diamond plate runners it's that center open open in the center but that's also so I could get underneath the car change oil and do stuff but I've boxed it in right there as you can see and if you'll notice there's a hole here for tying the car down there's a hole here for tying the car down it's not really for tying the car down for transport reasons that's so I can straighten frames Tie down for holding the car down around right here. But anyways, you can tie the car down, block it. You can use something as simple as a a bottle jack. I have a 20-ton bottle jack. I also use to straighten frames with. Uh, I also have just like demolition missions, pretty much the same uh, winch he does. This one's about four years old and seen seen some abuse. Yeah, if you, because of the way this trailer is designed, it's 16 on deck. Cars have come down and hit the top of this winch a few times. It's got KC lights for loading it at night. Last one, time I loaded a car on it, we dropped it on it because we figured, yeah, it can't hurt it. But yeah, it landed on the lamp and broke it, so we need to buy a new one. Like I said, originally a Bobcat trailer, this area up here was uh, for bucket attachments and accessories. What I'm going to eventually do is continue all the way out to here so and then move the winch forward so I don't have to worry about crushing the winch anymore. Plus this will still be a stoolage. Some of the tools I use for holding the car down is this here. It's got a hook. Small thing. And this is designed specifically for going into the holes of frames on cars. And you use that to chain it down. Also, you notice here on my diamond plate, I've cut a design like that. That's for the rear chains when I'm strapping a car down. It also has those, which you see I have my giant snatch block attached to it, which this thing comes in handy for millions of different applications, pulling in different angles, but best of all, if you have a car that's dead, can't get it off the trailer, you just take the winch from up there, run it all the way under the car, which can be fun at times, through the winch block back here, and then come back right up to the front bumper, and you can pull a car off the trailer with this. Now, I know Mitch from Demolition Missions is thinking about putting a set of ramps like this on his car, on his trailer. Well, like one of the other guys on there said, it really limits what you can put on the trailer. 90% of the time when I have a fresh car, I have to take these off and stick them in the back of the truck. And it's kind of a pain in the ass because these uh, weigh about 100 pounds each. Also, these uh, I've been running these over every time instead of taking them off, and now they're bent to tar. I'm going to build some new holders and try and tilt these back. I don't know if it's going to help that much, but I'm going to do it anyways and make it out of some steel like this. So I don't have to worry about bending those anymore. But you can 
see how it's attached there. It's just a really thick pin all the way through. I mean, they're adjustable. They'll slide all the way up to here for sticking smaller stuff on there. I've used it to load toolboxes back when it was a wooden deck. And just a clip with a hole drilled through the pin. But maybe when I modify the front, I'll be able to pull cars far forward far enough because it'll be it'll go from a 16 on deck to about a 18 foot on deck trailer. It's got a slight dovetail to it. This trailer, because it sits over the axles, it actually sits pretty high. And I always, and it was designed for equipment trailers, so I always just have to stick a jack under the tongue up there to, uh, otherwise the cars drag on those hooks. Even some of the high lifted derby cars still drag, so. And that's kind of the new hauler I've been using. It's actually a company truck. They allow me to use it, just as long as I ain't wasting their gas, wasting my own. Had to put some new tires on it. It had big off-road tires on it, on a two-wheel drive, which just didn't work out too well. It's got some nice E-rated heavy duties on there. This trailer originally was a 12,000 capacity. The axles have been swapped out to 3,000 capacity each, so it's, or 3,500 actually, so it's around 7,000 capacity now. Which, that truck weighs in at 4,620. This trailer weighs in at 4,800 pounds, so it's ungodly heavy, so. Probably I don't have much Jeep, you know, I don't have much capacity to carry anything on this anymore, but they did that because the register a 12,000 GVW trailer is like 600 bucks a month and you can't get a permanent plate. I have a permanent plate on this and I don't remember what I paid, but don't ever have to pay it again, so. But there's a look at my hauling rig and some of the stuff I do with it. See ya.